and welcome to Broker Connect. This is a bi-weekly live session with Arrive users where you can learn best practices, get insight into how other brokers are using the system, and get tips from these seasoned users as well. Today's guests are Lisa Lund and Adriana Bates, and we're super excited to have them here. Hello, ladies. Thanks so much for having us. Of course. Yes, thank you. These ladies are ready to share their knowledge with you to help you grow your business with Arrive and get the most out of the platform. But before we dive into it, I wanted to let you know about all the other good stuff we have going on at Arrive. So for new users, we've got two sessions of new user training every Wednesday at 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. Eastern. And we also have office hours every Tuesday and Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern. Arrive University is every other week, and we also have Arrive Intellect, which is a new monthly series that brings together experts in the real estate industry to discuss trends and how to get ahead. So lots of opportunities for learning, but let's dive into Broker Connect now. So Adriana, Lisa, welcome again. Thanks for being here, guys. Adriana, I'm going to kick it over to you first to introduce yourself and your brokerage, and then Lisa, you can do the same. Hey guys, I'm Adriana Bates. I think we should call this meeting like the most badass. Can I say badass on the on the show? But the most badass woman, like empowerment and boss biatches. So I think we should do this more frequently because we were just talking before here that it's it's different sometimes for women in leadership and, and business ownership. So I think this is really cool that you did this. So kudos to you, Kelly. But thanks so much for having us. My name, like she said, is Adriana Bates. Um, I'm partner at Clear Mortgage. So we've been a mortgage broker for four years now. And we have, we just lost one of our bigger LOs to retail. We can talk about that later. But um, we, uh, as of last year, our numbers were, we did 480 units for about 140 million. Um, we did this mostly purchase business where we are, we're just now starting to get into consumer direct, which is, I know a little bit backwards. We probably should have done this before, but we were just trying to learn the broker world. Um, I've been in the business for 16 years and came from retail and then, uh, converted over to broker, uh, four years ago. Like I said, Lisa, how about you? Hi guys, um, I'm Lisa Lund here in Arizona and I am the owner broker for the Lund Mortgage Team. And I have been a broker since the dinosaur years, meaning that before there was technology or even support for the brokers, um, I have been doing mortgages. So in, in the broker world, I've only been a broker since 1999. And so watching technology develop over the years and trying to implement things has been a task for me. You know, I can do loans with my eyes closed. I can come up with solutions, but the technology part and creating efficiencies within your company over the years has been a real struggle and a struggle. And I think in the broker community mostly, and I'm excited that it's 2022 and now we have arrived, we have tools and we're able to use that technology piece and just be better as brokers. I didn't bring it up, but I'm in Kansas City, which is hilarious because Lisa's in Arizona. But look behind her. It's like like warming my heart right now how much she loves Kansas City. So small fun fact, Lisa, my son plays football with Henny, who is the backup quarterback, you know, for Mahomes. Um, so they play together. So it's been really neat to kind of get him in, in the mix with youth football. But anyways, side note. My husband's a huge KC fan, and this is our home office, so I let him decorate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love it. Kudos to you guys. I'm actually a Chargers fan, but I let him have his way, right? Happy husband, you know. He has one room in my house. <laughs> the thing that we've got to deal with. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah. yeah. All right, ladies. Talk to me a little bit about um, how you discovered Arrive. How, how long ago did you join the platform? How did you first hear about it? Adriana, you want to kick us off? Sure. So prior to Arrive, and it's been about... I heard about Arrive at a couple of conventions that I was with within the broker community. There was a lot of um, rumblings and grumblings, particularly after one of Arrive's competitors, who I was actually using, Calix Point, just completely shit the bed when the Earl rolled out. Like there was a lot of frustration for me there. Um, coming from retail, as opposed to Lisa being in, in the broker world, retail, we had corporate that did a lot of these rollouts for us, that handled a lot of this, these transitions was we had corporate that would communicate to us when changes were coming and be proactive. You know, they had departments to do this for us. So when we became broker owners, it was very difficult for me to, to juggle being a one of our top producers, but then also start researching 
what are we going to do as an alternative to some of the LOSs out there? So when the Erla debacle happened, um, I knew that it was time that we had to make a, a change just because of the inefficiencies that were happening within the team as we were trying to get the flow from Calix Point into whichever wholesaler investor that we were going to be executing a loan through. So when I went on a couple of broker community events, a lot of the people that I respect in the industry were talking about Arrive and some of the things that Arrive was going to be doing that would make our lives a lot easier. So I would say in September-ish, I was like re really ready to make a change of 2021. January 2022 is when we officially made the changeover. So I've only been on the platform for about six months, you know, five and a half months. And um, yeah, I know we're going to talk about how we've implemented it later, but that's how I heard about it. And I heard about it um, through AIM, through an organization, and when it first started. And I was one of those people with technology. It's like, okay, I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to do this. I was scared to jump on board. At that point, I was using Calyx Point as well. I've used it forever. And it was like, I could never find a time to switch over. So I thought in my mind. And so it was like, okay, I'll go to these events. I would hear about it. I would hear people implementing the technology, you know, jumping in. And it was something that was last on my list to do. Uh, for whatever reason, I was like, okay, let's get through this month. Let's keep in, uh, increasing our loans. You know, let's let's break these goals. Let's break these goals. But I wasn't really looking at the technology part. And then when the new 1003 came out, like you said, Calyx Point just, you know, oh I don't God. know where their heads were. I have no clue. It was like legitimately like physically painful. Well, it literally was the week that it was rolling out. And when I found out that they had no... Not, nothing on it. I was like, screw it. We're going to do a ride. And everyone in my office was like, huh? Like, you're like a dinosaur. So you don't change technology. You don't do that. Like, what are you talking about? I said, we're going to, okay, I made up my mind. We're going to jump full in with a ride. And it was the best decision that I made. I agree. That's awesome. So talk to me a little bit about, about the timelines then. So how long do you think it took you to fully implement or transition over and and how long do you think it was until you really felt comfortable with the platform i think lisa and i are giggling to ourselves because we have very similar personalities i think with women in this business you realize that we're very very like if you did all of our personality profiles i think our discs would look almost exactly the same when we make a decision right lisa we're like we're doing it figure like even if there wasn't training we'd be like figure it out so when we decide to roll it yeah. out the same as lisa we're like jump in let's go we it was so but it was easy wasn't it lisa like it was the, and guys, full disclosure, we're not making any money on this. Like, like arrived, didn't pay us to do this is honest. You could message any one of us about this. We're like, legitimately, it was easy. It's consumer friendly, meaning visually like the flow yes. that you go through what I said to my salespeople, make sure these six check boxes are checked. If there's a red exclamation point, you didn't do something right. That was my training. <laughs> I, um, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm not that tech savvy on my end and it was very easy. So I like to have control. I'm a little bit of a control freak over here. So what I decided is that I was going to jump in with each department at a time. So I was going to have sales start on it and make sure that, okay, they're understanding how to use it. They're understanding how to use it forward facing with the clients because right, they're bringing in the business first and foremost is let's get them jumping on right away. And so they had, you know, I'm not going to lie for about three months until we clean out our system, we did have most of our um, teams working in both systems within point and within arrive. And it wasn't that big of a deal from what you're thinking, because honestly, it's easy to take a file out of point and put it into arrive if you need to. Um, so that wasn't a big deal. So I started and I did departments. I don't know about you, Adriana, but I was like, okay, I'm going to work with my sales team, make sure that we're working out the kinks. They're working with the clients directly. Boom. From next, I'm going to go to my setup team. Okay. Mm -hmm. How does this look like? How do we order this in here? How do we do this? And then processing and closing. Mm -hmm. So I kind of did it in sections, but within a month, I would say when I say I did it in sections, it wasn't like, okay, I spent three months with this. I mean, we had it implemented within a month. And um, once the files were moving in Arrive, I can tell you my processing team did not want to have to go back in point. They were upset that they had any files left in point mm -hmm. um to be honest with you but i took about three months to really get their pipelines cleaned out and it was a busy time we jumped in about a year maybe a, i think it was march of 2021 wow. so we jumped in yeah. a year ago yeah yeah it was crazy and i decided to do this everyone thinks i'm insane all the time mm -hmm. in my office but it's the way we do things but it was actually very simple I think it was more the fear of the unknown for our office than when they actually got in there. It was like, oh, hey, okay, 
this is not bad. I think it was them thinking, oh, I have to learn a whole new system. This is going to be scary. And I even thought that until we started taking it piece by piece, sales, then yeah. ops. And then once they jumped in it, everyone started playing with it. I mean, I would work late at night um, and start playing with little things and learning it. And the great thing about it is you guys had more support than I've had in the past 20 years working with Point Calyx oh in the first month. I mean, I was online at 11 o'clock at night on a little online help. And I remember I would get messages back. Not that you guys do that anymore, but when I was first getting on there, and maybe you do, I had all the support that I needed and it was fixed like that. Yeah. And I was fortunate that Lisa had already onboarded before I did. So you used a lot of her videos and I was just watching Lisa. I was like, oh yeah, that's smart. Like, oh yeah, I'll do it that way. So thank you, Lisa. We like, we haven't been able to say thank you to you yet, but you were one of the big power users that came on first. So you really paved the way for us. So that really means a lot because we know you're busy and you don't, this isn't a way that you make money. So we super appreciate that, that you took the time to record some of those videos. Cause it really helped me. I was like, Hey team, go watch this video. <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to, and, and you really, really helped that way. So no, I didn't take the time to train each department, um, but I probably should have, but it wasn't painful because you guys arrive at that point had already executed and like put out tons of videos. So as long as I knew they were on each training module and they completed it, it was really easy. And I told, I told them that arrives your customer support. So if you have a question, don't come to me on it, just go there. And they were super, super happy. Same thing with the Facebook um, group. Like it's really nice to have Facebook has been, yes. Yeah, to have a community where, and I'm sure that's great for you guys because it's like ongoing feedback, right? Like what yeah. do we need? What do we want to change? And how do we get around this? Or what's the solution for that? So it's really awesome to just have a community that's that's kind of united and using it. Yeah, I think you bring up a really great point. And I think it's really interesting the way that both of you trained your teams a little differently, yeah. right? So oh, Adrian, resources at least didn't have those. So in her defense, like, like she, maybe she would have used that. I used her videos. So I was like, yeah, go watch this. That's true. Yes, yeah, so we are super grateful for Lisa for all of her help with that. Um, but it's kind of cool the way that both of you took a different approach to it. So, so Lisa, very super hands-on, you know, trained each department. And Adriana, you're like, do your thing. The resources are available to you. Here's what I want. Um, and yet each team has been successful in the in the transition. So I think that's that's pretty cool. And then you guys touched upon um, the Facebook group, which is a huge asset for us. As you said, Adriana, we at Arrive are obsessed with customer feedback. Um, we want to know everything you guys are experiencing, every pain point, everything that you think should be changed or um, adjusted. So the Facebook group is just um, is something huge for us. And if you guys could just talk a little bit about um, how Arrive or how you have experienced that Arrive will kind of use that Facebook group to um, implement implement change or implement feedback based off of uh, customer customer feedback. I we might as well keep the alphabet okay. order thing going. Yes. So um, I embrace technology from very, very beginning. Like I said, growing up, growing up in retail is a little bit different than having to build your own company from the ground up just because there were things that I was used to. I was used to, like I said, there was a technology, like technology department where my personality type, if I can't figure something out, I get super frustrated and I'm mm -hmm. like, oh my, I, can, I just want to ping somebody and get the answer right away. Right. And I also was taught to build out a CRM and utilize the CRM from a very, very beginning stages in my career. So I've been building out a particular CRM um, and having that Facebook community there, it was nice for me be, to be able to honestly use the search feature. If I had a question about something to just go ahead and utilize it. And most of us will ask a question in a very similar way. Whereas someone that's behind the scenes in the, in building out tech. And I know a lot of your developers don't speak the same language we do. It was nice to have the questions worded the way that we wanted them, as opposed to you guys pushing out content in your language. Does that make sense? I don't know if you agree to that, Lisa, but it was just nice to hear it in my own voice. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And I, what I love about the Facebook part too, is you can see how people do things differently and yeah. going on there and not only asking the questions, maybe they asked in a different way that you did, or you learned something. I'm always constantly learning something like, Oh, they did it this way. Okay. I'm going to implement that. And 
everyone runs their business a little bit differently, but we all have like the same goal at the end. And we want to communicate with our clients. We want to make efficiencies within our office. We want to keep, create processes. And so Facebook's been a huge deal for us. You know, my team members will go on there and say, did you know that they're doing this? Or did you watch this? Or did you see this? Even if I don't see it, they're on top of it as well. Awesome. All right. So as we talk about this onboarding or transition process, um, what is something that you think other users should know as they head into this transition process? It's not as hard as you think it's going to be. Like it's such a breath of fresh air. Your team's going to feel the same way. So I was a little bit skeptical in the beginning just because I'm like, oh, onboarding onto anything is never easy. But the way that you guys have made the visually appealing pieces your team is going to love it. Particularly, I think the stages and the workflows within Arrive are really, really good for KPI management as well from a broker owner side, you know, just making sure we're hitting our metrics. And I am sure there is no way that you're building out your previous LOS to give you the reporting the way that it's already out of the box with Arrive. I can guarantee that. No, I completely agree. I love going onto the dashboard. I love seeing how many files we have in, how many we've closed, where we're at with our purchases, our refinances. Um, I love pulling reports. My processors are constantly pulling their own reports now. Um, looking in there, you know, they're in charge of their whole, um, you know, their own queue, their own whatever. They're looking at the, all their pipeline, their whole pipeline all the time. So the onboarding for me was, I was a little bit taken back because we had so many files from being in Point Calyx for so long that I was like, oh my gosh, how are we going to do this? And I was a little bit overwhelmed. But once we did it, it wasn't bad. It wasn't hard. Like Adriana said, it was really easy. You just got to jump in and do it. Now, I don't know about you, Adriana, but we didn't transfer every file over from Point to Arrive just because I didn't want to be overwhelmed with that. And I've had a lot of people reach out to me through the Facebook, through their did you transfer all your old files over? Absolutely. And I do. So I still have my seat open over there. I, Just one, I don't well. know what I'm going to do with that. And maybe that's something that you guys are developing about a mass transfer. I don't know if that exists. So sorry if I'm teeing up a question that we probably shouldn't ask. But I'm sure this has been asked too. Can we mass transfer old files? That would be super, you know, if we could make it where it's at this stage, it's funded, pull this field from when it funded to what. And then just so we have a whole database of closed clients because... As we all know, guys, rates are cyclic, right? So it'd be really nice to have all our data in one place. So when that set, when that refi boom comes, whatever it is, two years like some are predicting, five years like others, whenever that refi boom comes again, I want my data in one place to be able to organize it from rates to loan type to, you know what I mean, PMI or no PMI, just so we can do it super fast um, so that we're able to really capitalize when the rates do drop again. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a, a great um, piece of feedback. Happy to happy to toss it up the ladder to the bosses. Is, is Would you say that's pretty high on your wish list? Is that the, at the top of your yes, wish list? Yes. Because it will save me money too, because I can stop paying for whatever we're paying on. Like the Focus IT, I don't know yes. who stores yours, Lisa, like you pay. It's not a lot, but it's still another bill, especially in this time. It's we still another pay. system. Yeah. So I, I manage ours, for instance, and as mm -hmm. clients call back, I mean, it's easy to transfer from point into arrive mm -hmm. single files. But yes. if you have all this data from past and even four years built up, mm -hmm. it, that's the one question I get a lot from people is like, I... I don't know how to transfer over my whole database. So maybe I'm a little bit skeptical about trying out Arrive. And if I were to say one thing, you're going to start building this new database. And as time comes, you can transfer them over for now. So don't let it stop you for now. But it would be a cool thing to have to be able to do one mass transfer. And I think a lot of people may be looking to jump on Arrive. That may be one thing that's stopping them. But don't let it stop you. Don't let yeah. it stop you because you'll realize how quickly you build up everything in Arrive. And if you need a file, just keep one seat open in whatever system that you did have. Um, and it's it's not that costly, but eventually it would be nice to get rid of, nice it. To rid of it. Yes. And it's pretty big because it's not always cloud-based. You know, I still have Point installed on my computer. I'd love to get rid of that stupid little green-looking <laughs> house on my desktop. <laughs> Whatever it it's is. It's on my computer too at the office. And so everyone's like, hey, can I get on your point? Because I know one of the best things about Arrive too, we haven't talked about yet, is it's cloud based. Like okay. you can I log in anywhere. And I love it. The one thing that, yeah, I would like it a little bit more mobile friendly, which I know you guys are working on. I know you have that feedback. Um, but it is sometimes hard to be like, how come I can't see it the way that I see it on my computer or on my phone? But I know right. you're working on that. But the fact that you can even access it on your phone is so badass. So don't don't think that I'm like downplaying like the mobile feature. It's amazing. 
good luck even trying to get anything Callie's related on your phone. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't get on my phone. And then also when you get a new laptop, right? You had to download oh. the whole thing you'll see whenever you, so I would not want to get a new laptop sometimes because with Callie's point, you had to download it. And then how many seats do you have available? And it was just not yeah. accessible. Yeah. From a business owner's perspective as well, how we can manage user settings, company settings very easily from one platform, not because you remember with Calyx, like I couldn't even remember like where I would go to go and change this or when we got a new license to do this or um, disabling users. It's such easy management from an owner's perspective. So again, just transitioning to a new LOS is hard, but sometimes like your company management is also difficult. This is super, super easy. And now that the majority of lenders are integrating with Arrive, it's making my life so much easier not having to utilize Optimal Blue. That's awesome. I can tell you if I say one pot, one thing from this is transferring over. Everyone's worried that it's going to take up time in your day. And honestly, the efficiencies from Arrive, my processor can process probably three to five files faster than one file in point Calix, just because of, like you said, the user friendly, finding things in the system, speaking to the clients, yep. literally the efficiencies are so much better that they can process more files that even if you're a little scared to switch over, those efficiencies create so much more time for your for your staff. Love here. It'll be even more badass mm -hmm. once these conditions start sinking into. How awesome is that going to be? So low once a file. I love the condition be. section already, but yeah. yes, when they can. Yeah. Do it, <laughs> I mean, like automatically, it'll be amazing. You know, that's that's we've tried to build that out in our own personal CRM, and it's just always been difficult with custom fields and things like that. So this is really really impressive that that's going to be coming out. I don't know when. It is. It is. Um, ladies, so you kind of, you guys were going on without me. You jumped ahead a little bit on the questions, talking about all your favorite things about Arrive, which is awesome. So I heard that you really like that it's cloud-based, it's efficient. Um, it allows you to do more business quicker, um, which is like music to our ears. We always want to hear that you guys are doing more business because of this, um, which is awesome. But talk to me a little bit more about the platform itself and the features that you really love or the features maybe that have um, allowed your business to change? What do you think those are? Uh, one of the big things for us is utilizing the need list and the custom need list that can be sent directly from uh, Arrive. I know that there were other versions of this in Calyx and that we've tried to build it out in our own CRM, but it is super smooth and we've we've allowed that to be our way that we request everything. And especially now that you have the auto signing with via, still through DocuSign, but through your platform has also been really nice because it allows from a management perspective to know when things are being out and to timestamp, like for example, conditions one are going out, you can see that because we can see when that needs list was sent. So I love the needs list creator and the auto send or the send directly from your system is really, really cool. And for me, um, I'm a big person on communication, internal and external communication. And I think one of the biggest tools that we use all the time is the internal notes. And then, like you said, the timestamp, but it is so nice that if a processor can go into a file and if they're on the phone with a client and the client says, I'm going to be out of town for two weeks, for instance, or I need to put this in my trust. I like using that as an example to be able to put notes in the system and anyone can log in at any time. If that processor breaks their leg or is in a car accident or something happens, someone else can jump in seamlessly, go in and look at if you're using the communication correctly and look to see, okay, this person already did this or this appraisal was ordered on this date. All of that communication is so wonderful internally that it creates, you know, we didn't have that in Calyx Point. Like we had one note spot, but it wasn't like anything was timestamped. You could go in and see who changed the file. Um, and having that communication in one spot, um, also we set up the communication externally to our clients. So um, you have your milestones that you can create and you can personalize, which I love. And the milestones are, you know, your file's been submitted to underwriting. Boom, it shoots out an email you know, to them directly and you can put in there, personalize it however you want. Um, and I went in and created all of that for our company. And so now certain things go in when it's funded, you know, when they are, um, if it's a purchase, how they're going to get their keys. We put that in there. You know, once it records, your realtor is going to give you your keys. If you have any questions, you know, get back to us. So for me, I'm a huge communication person internally and externally, and that's changed our game. Amazing. So let's shift focus a little bit and talk about um, the client perspective. So how has the POS been for the client? 
I really like the ability, you know, I, I always great feedback. Um, I know that the customization is coming out or it might have already been released. I just haven't had a chance to take it. I know it's coming where you can customize the POS, which is super awesome. Um, I love the ability to add custom questions. Like one that we added was, please enter your legal name as shown on your driver's license because a lot of people know sometimes names are different. So just little things like that where you can add custom questions that you're adding to it. You can customize what questions are asked or what triggers or what are automatically required on the POS. I love that part as well. Um, so I just think super, super slick and real easy to use. We did that customization as well for solar. Do you have solar? You know, oh, yes. huge in Arizona. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So for us having that option, you know, for the client, like, do you mm -hmm. have solar? Is your home held in a trust? Because if it is, we're going to need your trust documents. If it's a solar, we're going to need your solar lease. Um, so Adriana, that's amazing. I love, we use that tool all the time. Yeah. It's super, it's super nice. I really enjoy it. When the customization comes out, it's going to be even better. Yes. <laughs> How about um, the realtor portal? Have you guys gotten any feedback about that? So Lisa, I'm going to let you speak on this because we use a different platform for a lot of that. So um, I haven't used that feature yet just because, again, as a broker, sometimes you're in so many different um, platforms that it's, I know that my upfront team has their thing going with that. So I haven't used that part piece of Arrive just yet. So what I love about it, well, first of all, if anyone is in Arizona, you know that we're the weird ones. We have our own pre-qualification letter. So you guys put that in there for Arizona because we don't have just like a pre-qual letter. It's an actual form that is required. So you guys integrated that for us, which was huge. So anyone in Arizona, it's amazing because it actually fills out our pre-qualification form. But in other states, they take the pre-qualification letter. And what we like about it is once you pre-approve a client in your system, you can put the parameters in there and allow the realtor or the borrower to go into the portal and create their own pre-quals, as many as they want. Now, it's not going to let them go outside those parameters. So if you pre-qualify them for a $500,000 home, they can't go in and put a million in there. Um, so you set the parameters once you qualify them, but it, it creates another you know, another way for you to get in front of your realtors and give them, you know, value basically that they can go in and pull their own prequels. Now, some of them still want you to do it and it's easy. Once you go in there and put everything in there, you can literally do a prequel within a couple of minutes, if that. So you can do it for them. Again, you know, it's cloud-based. So wherever you are, if you're at your kid's game and you have your laptop or your phone, you can do it or they're able to access it directly and pull their own, which if they don't have to bother you, some realtors really enjoy that. It's training them to know that yes. they have a fingertips. Yes, they're I want to them all sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> as, long as, as much as I love saying that we work agent hours, I hate it too sometimes. I'm like, gosh darn it, it's 11 yeah. o'clock. Or just giving Please. them that avail availability to know that they have that extra tool, yes. yeah. I think is a great selling point for them. Whether they use it or not, having that availability and say, we can do this for you is great. Um, and just with the milestones as well, it, you can customize Arrive to how you work with your company. You know, Adriana and I have a lot in common, but we may run our companies just a little bit differently. And that's what's great about Arrive too, is you can customize it to how you want to create your systems. And so they do have milestones that if you want to let your realtors know during the process, then when your processor clicks appraisal received, you can have it not only go out to the consumer, your borrower, you can have a message go out to your realtor as well. So you can set up the milestones, not only for the, for the borrower, but for the realtors. Awesome. Okay. So I've heard you guys speak on a lot of a lot of different reasons about why you love the platform so much. But what I'm wondering now is what do you think or, or yeah, what do you think is the, the biggest way that Arrive has really changed your business or the way that you do business? So it's always nice to have the dashboard there so that the entire team can see how we're tracking towards our goals. You know, I think it's really important that everybody on your team is swimming in the same direction, as I say, knowing what our end goals are and knowing if we're on pace to meet those goals. Because whether we like to say that there's that ops sales conflict all the time, it is nice to know that ops can see where we're trending, sales can see where we're trending. So maybe in some cases, if a salesperson is um, not staying in their lane and kind of hounding ops and, and micromanaging a piece of the business, ops can say, hey, 
I got this girl, like go get another loan because we're looking a little short here. You know what I mean? It's nice for them to see where we are. And I like that visibility. And I like that that's customizable as well, depending on what role that they're in. So the biggest way that it's changed for me are efficiencies, obviously in the milestones, but then having that dashboard available for ops sales to see at all times. Yes, I would agree to um, the visibility of it all, to know where you're at in the process, to know where certain files are at, as well as like communication between yeah. ops and sales. I think sometimes that's the biggest thing, you know, in a marriage, right? How do you make a marriage work? They yeah. say communication. Yeah. And I like to look at sales and ops, not as sales is above ops or ops is above sales. It's a marriage. And how do you make that work? You communicate well with each other. You have the same end goal. Yes. Ops wants more deals in. Sales want to have deals close faster. So it really provides visibility so you guys can work as a team um, as well as the um, call reports. So if you are a business owner, um, the mortgage call reports that you would have to do quarterly were insane. It would take a full day to do from Point Calix, and this has changed the game. So you can literally do a mortgage call report if you're a business owner or whomever you have do it in your office. Yeah. It, so I think... Anywhere from my office manager who does that for me to my receptionist uses arrive. My receptionist can go in when a client calls in and she can see where a file is at now. So I think that internal communication, everyone is now on the same page. Whereas before in a system that's, you know, archaic, as I like to say, DOS, we're going to say it's a DOS program. You can't even read, you know, no one knows where it's at. No one knows where it's been. Has this person touched it or not? I mean, everyone in our office has gained something from Arrive. Um, and I think the main thing is communication, visibility, um, and ease. It's really simple to use. For sure. Great to hear. Last question here, ladies. What would you say to someone who is maybe on the fence of joining Arrive? They haven't really pulled the trigger yet. Uh, what would you say to them? Stop making excuses. Just do it. It's so much easier than you ever think. It is. I think any change in our business is always a little bit frightening, but it's it's much, much easier. And there's really, really strong support there. I would say um, do a tutorial. Maybe uh, I've done it with other brokers where, you know, I've gone online and show them how to use it. And once they see it, you know, I'm a visual person. So I wanted to actually like see it and jump in. So if you're that type of person, maybe reach out to someone Go, you know, reach out to Rive, you know, what videos you can watch, you know, to visualize it and talk to others that are using it and see what they like the best as well. All right. Well, that is a great way to wrap this up. So Lisa, Adriana, thank you guys so much for jumping on and sharing your knowledge and your experience with Arrive. It's always great hearing from successful brokers uh, like yourselves. And I know there are a lot of new Arrive users who will benefit from the info that you shared today. So thank you again for being here. No problem. Thank Thanks you. Thank you. All right. Catch us back here live for another episode of Broker Connect in two weeks. We'll have a new pair of awesome guests for you waiting to share their knowledge. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. Thank you.